an architect with a daring vision. A vision he will have to fight for. The Bahrain World Center rises on the shores of the Persian Gulf. What makes this building unique is not its height or beauty, but its green technology. It will be the first skyscraper in the world to be powered in part by its own wind energy. In theory, it's a brilliant idea, but nothing like this has ever been attempted. With the Earth's temperature on the rise and the need for clean energy greater than ever before, the stakes for the Bahrain World Trade Center couldn't be higher. For decades, wind has led as the planet's number one source of clean energy. Wind turbines worldwide have the capacity to produce 74,000 megawatts, which could power at least 20 million average US homes. Almost all this energy comes from big wind farms, usually located far from the people who use it. But now, one architect wants to bring wind turbines a lot closer to home right into the middle of a busy city and right onto the very building they will power. The idea is the brainchild of a 37-year-old South African architect named Sean Keeler. Based in Dubai, Keeler's won fame for his skyscrapers all over the Middle East. But for four years, he's researched wind turbines looking for a chance to use them in one of his buildings. I've become very passionate about sustainable design and incorporating sustainable initiatives within projects that we are designing at the moment. Buildings consume at least a third of the world's energy. Kila wants to use green technologies like low energy cooling systems and super efficient glass that lets in light while rejecting heat. But he also wants to design a building that will create its own power. An avid sailor, Keela knows how to read the wind. It is this skill that helps him sense the unique potential of the proposed Bahrain World Trade Center site. In November 2003, when we first came to Bahrain, there was a tremendous wind blowing. My first impression is I should be sailing. I noticed the wind direction and the velocity of the wind. Bahrain's capital, Al Manama, sits at the edge of the Persian Gulf. Each morning, as the sun heats the island of Bahrain, hot air rises. This creates an area of low pressure which draws cooler air in from the sea. This daily cycle produces strong onshore winds over 60% of the time. In the heart of the world's biggest oil producing region, Sean Keeler finds the perfect location for a skyscraper powered by wind. During initial research, he faces the daunting task of figuring out where the wind turbines should go. Rather than just put them on the roof, Kila wants to incorporate the turbines into the building. He imagines them on bridges between two towers stacked on top of each other. It's a great idea, but there are two major challenges. Turbine blades capture the energy of moving air, sending it to a generator, which converts it to electricity. But to be able to rotate, the blades need uninterrupted winds coming directly at them. For this reason, wind turbines are mounted on vertical poles and can turn to face winds from different directions. Keeler's turbines, however, would be on a horizontal axis, fixed in position, 
unable to turn into the changing winds. The second major challenge is the way Kila wants to stack the turbines. Because wind speed increases with height, the higher turbine will spin faster and create more power than the lower turbine. All three turbines need to rotate at the same speed or the top one will wear out sooner. Kila realizes the key to making the turbines work is the shape of the towers. Again, the architect's experience as a sailor provides the inspiration for the solution. The towers resemble two tall sails. In plan, they have an elliptical shape, like an airplane wing. To compensate for the turbine's inability to turn, Kila hopes the shape and orientation of the towers will funnel the wind directly into the turbine's path. The tapering shape of the towers also means they will funnel more wind to the lower turbine and less wind to the higher one, making all three rotate at roughly the same speed, yielding approximately the same amount of power. It's a brilliant concept, but with no plot to follow, the design poses a lot of unprecedented engineering challenges. Kila needs time to find engineers who can figure out the technical details. However, less than a week after the architect presents the concept, a very enthusiastic client greenlights the project. Bulldozers are instructed to begin clearing the site immediately. It was a fast-track job of enormous proportions. With construction underway, Kila begins searching for turbine manufacturers and bridge engineers. But very soon, he discovers others do not share his vision, or are daunted by the challenges. Blade failure resulting in the machine toppling over is pretty rare. It doesn't happen very often at all, but it does happen. And if it were to happen in a situation where it's, there's a bunch of people inside of a commercial building only a few inches away from the spinning blades, the possibility for people getting seriously hurt is, is very real. Kila emails dozens of turbine manufacturers and power providers. They all turn him down. Six months pass and the Bahrain World Trade Center reaches the fifth floor. During the research of uh, all the turbine manufacturers that we were consulting, we found that a lot of them were saying, this can't be done. Turbines have always been placed on masts, in greenfield sites, not in an urban environment, and certainly not between two buildings, or on a bridge, where the dynamics of a turbine placed on a bridge compared to if they're on a pole are so different. The Bahrain World Trade Center grows skyward with each passing day. Kila still hasn't found an engineering team to make his green vision a reality. Sean Kila refuses to give up on his dream of the world's first wind-powered skyscraper. Finally, after six months, his persistence pays off. 4,500 kilometers away, outside Copenhagen, two Danish companies respond to his pleas. Ole Sangil designs turbines. Lars Torbeck engineers bridges. Normally, their paths would never cross, but Sean Kiele wants to put a turbine on a bridge. And a week later, I flew into Bahrain and I met Lars and Ule. And my first question was, is this really possible? And Lars looked at me and he said, yes it is, it's taking two different pieces of ordinary engineering and just putting it together in a very special way. So the bridge is stable. 